some of the issues that have been discussed along the years have been cybercrime, whether there's actually something called cybercrime, whether there are new crimes committed or invented or created around the internet, or uh, as many believe and has uh, been expressed during the sessions, uh, uh, it's uh, old forms of cr old crimes taking new forms because there are new tools to commit them. Uh, a large uh, weight of the discussion has been carried by the coexistence uh, of the issues of security, privacy, and openness. Uh, there are views where some, according to which some security measures actually impinge on negatively on freedoms of access and openness and speech or on the privacy of people. And uh, countervailing discussion has uh, looked at the enhancement of privacy through the use of security-oriented technology. These are open issues which have been discussed in a lively way. Uh, during the, 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 the IGF sessions and uh, sometimes have been brought together. Uh, there have now been some requests, in, in, in some, some proposals in a few of the regional preparatory meetings to again have sessions in some of the future IGF meetings that are concentrated on security, but the uh, coexistence of these issues makes it very important to discuss them together. Uh, there have been discussions about malware, its origin, its spread, the ways to confront it, uh, not at the technical level, maybe some of it in the workshops, but in ways that have been enlightening uh, in two directions. I would say there's basically uh, uh, two sides to this, which would be the technical community and the policy making uh, participants of the IGF. Uh, one can expect, of course, that her, there has been some capacity building for the policy makers uh, by listening and discussing uh, what the technical community has to say. But there has also been uh, a lot of growth in understanding by the technical community of what are the policy issues that affect most importantly the policy makers, the decision makers, uh, and their voters in, 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 in many governments, uh, how this works. One interesting uh, aspect of uh, the, the, the evolution of the security issue uh, during the previous four years of the IGF has been the emergence of the word cybersecurity, which is very scarcely used by the technical community and by the practitioners of uh, internet uh, operations and security. Uh, cybersecurity was introduced in some workshops in the second uh, IGF meeting, uh, it spread out and then became more of a generic. Uh, it came up again, it, it, it linked to a category of public security, uh, but also it became very interesting for a time in the, in the previous IGFs as an issue of national security, the protection of assets, of information assets through the internet uh, that are relevant for national security of countries. Uh, this came to the uh, highest point in the third IGF meeting where there was a, a speech calling for a cyber treaty, a treaty for managing acts of war, understanding and managing what could possibly be acts of war in cyberspace. This issue faded completely away from the IGF in Sharm el Sheikh. Uh, this was almost not mentioned. We have seen this issue of a cyber treaty and cyber war emerge now in national contexts in some countries and in the UN General Assembly context without being a plenary issue. And I think that tells us something very important about what authority is being delegated to the IGF by some significant governments. It's definitely uh, not, I mean, the authority delegated to the IGF, uh, to the IGF continues to be important to discuss internet issues, but key national security issues, for example, are now being taken to other fora. Uh, the other important finding uh, of, uh, while preparing this chapter was uh, that uh, I mapped the issues that were being discussed in the technical and practitioner communities, in the technical standard setting and the practitioner communities, and the issues that were being discussed during, inside the IGF sessions. And it's very striking. It's, it's really incredibly clear to see uh, there's a time lag between issues becoming important in a technical community, then becoming important in the mainstream internet communities, and then becoming issues for, let's say, a main session in the IGF. Uh, this time lag is generally of about two years. 
And one can start to see also what happens on the way back, what happens with people who come to the IGF, come in contact with an issue and then go back to their countries or organizations or companies or civil society and get some work done, I mean like legislation started and stuff like that. And again, it's about two years. And this for me is one of the most significant uh, reasons to add to the fact that we have this freedom to discuss in the IGF that's very open, that doesn't try to lead to a cyber treaty or anything even close to that, together with the fact that the discussions are defaced several years from what's happening in the technical and operational communities, tells us that discussions in the IGF are extremely valuable, but they can only stay extremely valuable if they are kept in this very open, very free context where people can act upon them at different paces, at different stages in time, depending on where they stand. So, unless you have any further questions, that's it.